Hello everyone, thanks for watching the video. This video is going to be about a very important topic in building your own trailer, and that is tongue weight. It may not seem like the most exciting thing to discuss, but I assure you it is the most important thing to consider if you are building your own trailer. If you get it wrong, it can be dangerous and fatal on the highway. This is my trailer behind me. It is a 12 foot by seven foot trailer. I affectionately call Eddie. This is episode 21 of the build. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to go back and, and watch the entire build process. So when I originally designed the trailer frame, I designed the axles to be slightly behind the center of the trailer. So basically 40% of the trailer behind the axle, 60% in front of the axle. Because ideally, tongue weight you want about 10% to 20% of your total trailer weight to be resting on the tongue of your trailer. The big thing with that is if you don't have enough tongue weight it becomes dangerous because the trailer will actually pull up on the back bumper of your vehicle and that is when you see these death wobbles down the highway and those are the generally the cause of the most serious accidents you've ever seen with a trailer and there's no recovering from that once your vehicle gets in that kind of death wobble so you absolutely need to avoid that so i was very concerned about not having enough tongue weight on it so when i designed the trailer and i started building it um, I was leaning toward a heavier tongue weight. I've upgraded my truck to an F-250, so I'm not worried about the extra weight on the suspension of my vehicle. Now that I am building the rest of the trailer and I have components that are going into the trailer, because I'm building it myself, I can decide where those things go. So that gives me the chance to play with the tongue weight and adjust it if necessary. So currently right now in the build I have uh, some Battleborn batteries. I have two Game Changer batteries that are 80 pounds each. I have a 3000 watt inverter that is 40 pounds. I have a water port water tank shower that's an 8 gallon um, tank on the back bumper. So I'm going to discuss in this video how those things and where I place them affect the tongue weight. So basically I can customize my tongue weight because I am building my own trailer. So let's show you exactly some of the things that I'm first of all putting into the trailer, how heavy they are and where they're going in the trailer. And then I'm going to show you the simple device I got at Princess Auto. It basically is a scale for weighing the tongue weight of a trailer and you simply just put it underneath the tongue, you lower the jack and it has a gauge here and will tell you how much tongue weight you're exerting on the tongue of your trailer. So let's go inside, I'll show you what I have inside so far. Okay this is the inside of the trailer as it is today. Here is the wood stove. This is the doorway here. So you come in, the wood stove is right here. These are the lithium batteries from Battleborn. Those are two 270 watt lithium batteries. They weigh 80 pounds each. So you're looking at 160 pounds of battery. And that is the 3000 watt inverter that weighs about 40 pounds. So the framing here behind it is the wheel well. So you're looking at where the axles are right here. So this would be the axles underneath the trailer to give you an idea. So I put a lot of thought into making sure the heaviest parts of the trailer were pretty much right over the axle. The slide out kitchen has added significant weight to the trailer, um, but that is at the back, which I factored in. The drawer here has some cast iron cooking gear, plates and everything else so that's added weight to the back of the trailer. For the most part that will be the significant weight added to the trailer. Um, eventually up top there will be some cabinets that will store lightweight items like clothing and bedding. To balance out the weight of the trailer on this side you can see the wheel well that hasn't been framed in yet. On this side I am looking at putting a safe and um, some extra water storage there as well to help balance out the weight of the trailer. So if I needed to, I could shift the batteries further to the front of the trailer if I need to adjust the tongue weight. So this is the luxury of building your own trailer. Um, I had some leeway. I could have even actually pushed them up further, but I decided this area here is going to be my storage closet, which will somehow house the water tank, hot water heater, water pump, and other various things that I will need in the trailer. That's the shower in there with my toolbox. So that will probably be empty most of the time. 
Um, I'm going to uh, tile it or finish it so that will add some weight to it. Uh, that will be my cooler. So that will always be full of food or ice and hopefully maybe it will be a Dometic uh, uh, electric fridge at some point. But um, that's going to be there and that will be the kitchen counter with a sink and maybe some cabinets up top there. So the big thing to take away from the inside here is that I could adjust the batteries if I needed to if the tongue weight was not heavy enough at the front. I could have slide the inverter and the batteries closer to the front of the trailer helping to increase the tongue weight at the front. So let's go inside and look at some of the things that have the biggest effect on tongue weight outside which would be the water port 8 gallon weekender shower my bike rack which will affect the weight depending on what I have on it. Okay so this is how my trailer is normally set up. I have the scissor jacks and the tongue jack here. So what I'm going to do is position this where the hitch would normally be. So ideally you don't want it on an angle, you want it um, as parallel to the ground as possible. So I'm just going to use this 4x4 four four. and we want to get that close as can be. You can see the numbers here. I'm going to lower the scissor jacks and then lower this until we see what the tongue weight is. So I'll make sure that all the weight is resting on the scale. So just less than 200. That's 180. So if that's 180. Looks like it's about 190 kilograms of tongue weight. Okay, let's do a little experiment. We just determined that the tongue weight was 190 kilograms with my water port weekender empty. This holds about eight gallons of water. So let's fill it up and see how much the weight of eight gallons of water on the back bumper affects the tongue weight. Open this up. Okay, so how much does eight gallons of water actually weigh? Well, just from the internet, this is the numbers that I came up with. Let's see how it affects the tongue weight of the trailer. onto the scale. You can see here how that is 180 kilograms. And I'm going to lower it down and certainly okay it's completely off the ground. All the weight is resting on the scale now and before the water was in it was clearly over the 190 kilogram line and now it's just barely over the 180. I would say it's not quite 185 kilograms of tongue weight now. So that uh, eight gallons of water affected over five kilograms of tongue weight. Okay, this is my kind of heavy duty bike rack. I've got the adapter off because it can carry up to four bikes. I would never carry four bikes on here. It definitely would obscure the tail lights and license plates and that sort of thing. But just for example purposes, I'm going to uh, load up my e-bike just to see how that affects the tongue weight. And like a lever, the further we get away from the axle of the trailer, the more the weight is going to affect the tongue weight. So we've come out a good almost two feet, three feet. I'm going to throw my e-bike on here, which weighs about 70 pounds, and let's see how that affects the tongue weight. Now this bike carrier is not meant for a heavy e-bike, it's meant for mountain bikes. Um, but I'm clearly doing this just as an example to see how the tongue weight's affected. So don't look at this. Um, first of all, these are for 29 inch wheels. Um, these are fat tires, so they're actually not going to fit on here properly. So I'm really just putting this on here to give you an idea of how much it affects the tongue weight.
So we have the e-bike on the back now with the water port full of water. So just with the water port, we are just over, or not quite at 185 kilograms of tongue weight. Now with the e-bike, which I believe is about 70 pounds, 80 pounds, plus the rack, which is probably a good 30 pounds. Let's see how that affects it. Okay, we are off the ground for the tongue tongue jack. So the tongue jack is now off the ground and we are not even at 160 kilograms of tongue weight. So just by having the e-bike on the back, that affected the tongue weight probably about over 25 kilograms of tongue weight. So you're looking at way over 50, 50 pounds of tongue weight just by having an e-bike off the back bumper. Okay, so with the e-bike on the back of the bumper, that brings the tongue weight to 160 kilograms, which is about 350 pounds. Now this is a 3,500 pound axle. So if my trailer maxed out at 3,500 pounds, 10% tongue weight would be 350 pounds. So if for some reason I was building the trailer and the back of it got even lighter, I would be in that dangerous situation. So I hope this was helpful for you because it's been very enlightening for me because I'm so concerned about having a dangerous trailer on the highway that I've really spent a lot of time thinking about this and researching it. So I will continue to experiment with weight and adjust things. For example, currently right now I have the spare tire and the propane tank, a 20 pound propane tank, at the front of my trailer just behind the tongue because it's a convenient place to store it. When I take the trailer onto the highway, the scissor jacks come up and I take them off along with the chains and um, <clears throat> the actual tongue jack. And I ideally would like a place to store those. So I'm considering building a storage cabinet on the back of the trailer. Um, and again, that will all depend on how much that weighs and how much weight I can put back there before it becomes a problem. So throughout the build, I will basically be trying to balance this all along. And one more thing I wanted to mention before I wrap up the video is, first of all, the coupler that you have on your trailer, they all have ratings. So you need to make sure that your coupler, first of all, can handle the tongue weight of your trailer. And finally, of course, that your vehicle, the vehicle is capable of handling the tongue weight of your trailer as well. Again, my F-250 is not gonna have any problems with that, but those of you with uh, SUVs and that sort of thing, um, you might want to consider that if you're factoring in that for your DIY trailer build. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, follow the build, follow my adventures. I'd really appreciate having you along. Cheers.